The first point of 8.6 should be fairly easy. It's just when you have two rational functions that equal each other, you're going to cross multiply to solve for x. So I'll do this really fast. Multiply that and multiply that. Remember, bring the bottom to the top and bring this bottom to the top. It makes it easier for you. So 3 times 4x plus 5 equals 9 times x plus 1. We'll have to distribute 12x plus 15 equals 9x plus 9. Now we'll solve for x, subtract 9x. 3x plus 15 equals 9. 3x equals negative 6. And x equals negative 2. This one is definitely a little bit trickier. You can't just cross multiply because there are three terms. There's one term with this 1. There's another one with 8 over x minus 5. There's a third term with 3 over x. So you can't just cross multiply. Instead, what you have to do is multiply each term by the lowest common denominator like we, were, like we learned how to find in 8.5. So we're, what we're going to do is look at these three functions and say, what does each one need? This one doesn't have a denominator, the 1. The 8 has a denominator of 8 minus 5. And the 3 has a denominator of x. So looking at this, you know the lowest common denominator will be x times x minus 5. Because some of the terms need x, like this one doesn't have just a plain x. Some of them need x minus 5. This one doesn't have the x minus 5. And this one doesn't have either one, so that's going to need both x and x minus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that and start multiplying each one times x and x minus 5. So we'll multiply this times x minus 5 and x. We'll multiply this one times x and x minus 5. And this one, same thing, x and x minus 5. OK? Um, 1 times x times x minus 5 is just x times x minus 5. This, this one's more interesting. The x minus 5 and the x minus 5 cancel, so we're left with minus 8x because of this minus sign here. In here, the x and the x cancel, and we're left with 3 times x minus 5. OK, now we're just going to multiply that out. x squared minus 5x minus 8x equals 3x minus 5. Solve for x. Since we have an x squared term and 2 is the highest degree, we need to get everything to one side. We need to set this equal to 0. So we're going to have to subtract all that, or get that all to the other side. But let's simplify what we have on the left first. So we have x squared minus 13x. Now it's time to subtract this 3x over and add the 5. So we have x squared minus 16x plus 5 equals 0. OK, I actually made a small mistake that I need to fix really fast. I forgot to multiply this 3 times the 5 and get negative 15. So changing all that, we're going to add 15. So 3x minus 16x plus 15 equals 0. And you know, this is really easy. Like, it's really easy to make mistakes. And I, I clearly make mistakes as well. It's just important, you know, when you're checking your work to make sure you're doing things correctly, like I just did. I went back and checked. All right, so now we have this function. You know at this point, we have two ways to solve this. We can graph it, calculate the zeros. That's the graphing method. Or we can do the algebraic method, which is us, you know, factoring this. I'm going to choose factoring. It's a little bit easier for this one. So we have x. Uh, minus 15, x minus 1. Negative 15 times negative 1 gives us a positive 15. Those two things combined gives us negative 16x. So x is equal to 15, and x is equal to 1. All right, you guys are going to love this, but you have to beware. So you get two answers, and you have to make sure that there are no extraneous solutions. That is, a solution that's not actually a solution of the problem. Like there's, you're finding two intersections of those graphs, but actually one of them is not a real intersection. However, we can do this pretty easily. We're just going to go up here, plug them both in, and what we're looking for is that the denominator never becomes zero. If the denominator does not become zero, we can skip a bunch of, of steps and assume it's a correct answer. So let's see, if we put in 15 here, 15 minus 5 is 10, not zero. If we plug in 15 here, it's just 15, that's not 0. So 15 is a good answer. We'll do the same thing with 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, that's fine. And 1 is fine. So both of those are going to be good answers.
I've got one more problem for you guys, and in this one you also cannot just simply use cross multiplication because there's three terms. One, two, three. It just wouldn't work out. So what you need to do is first find the lowest common denominator so that we can make we can multiply each one by the lowest common denominator. So in doing this, you're really asking yourself, what is it gonna be? Like this one only has x minus three. This one has x plus three and x minus three. This one just has x plus three. So this one in the middle, it actually has everything we need. It's just these two on the outside that we have to change a little bit. Like the one on the left only has x minus three, the one on the right only has x plus three, but we need them all to be x plus three, x minus three, because that contains everything. So what we're gonna do is multiply everything by that lowest common denominator, by this, x plus three, x minus three. And what this does is it actually cancels out like that, and it's just six times the one that it didn't have, six times x plus three, which is six x plus 18. The one in the middle, it also gets multiplied by the least common denominator, x plus three, x minus three. But of course, those cancel out like that, and we're just left with eight x squared. The last one also gets multiplied times x minus three, x plus three. The plus three cancels out, and we're multiplying negative four x times that. So negative four x squared, and then negative four x times negative three is plus 12 x. This is a quadratic function with the, with the degree being two. So we know we're gonna set this equal to zero at some point, and then graph it, calculate the zeros, or factor it. So let's just start that. We have four x squared plus 12 x equals six x plus 18. Um, I'm gonna move everything to the right side, so minus six x minus 18, okay, minus six x minus 18, and combine everything. Four x squared plus six x minus 18. So like I said, you can graph it, calculate the zeros, that's the graphing method, or you can factor it, solve for zero, that's the factoring method. I'm just going to factor, I'm gonna factor out a two Then I'm gonna be looking for the factors that give that. So I know one of these has to be two X and one has to be X. Um, you know, we've looked at a few different ways to factor things like this and it just continues to be tricky, right? Like it just continues to be a problem. Now, when I first taught this, I taught the box method. So that's what I'm gonna show here, but you can also do a fair amount of guessing and checking to just try to get what you want out of this. Like you want a positive three in the middle and you need a negative nine on the end. So you're looking for the factors that are gonna give, you know, positive three in the middle and negative nine on the end. But this is how the box method works. You know, we're gonna write two x squared here, minus nine here. Then we're gonna multiply two x squared, two x and negative nine to give negative 18. And we're looking for the factors that give negative 18, but combine to give positive three. So I think the only thing that's gonna work is plus six and minus three. Those two things multiply to give negative 18, but they add together to give plus three, and those need an x. We're just gonna factor out the rows, so minus three from here, two x, x, and looks like three. So x plus three, two x minus three. Let's go ahead and check to make sure those are indeed the factors that we want. Um, I'm just bringing that two down. So two x times three is plus six. Minus three times x is minus three. That's gonna work. Yeah, this is gonna work out. So our factors, we set each of those equal to zero. Two x minus three equals zero. Two um, x equals three. Divide, you're gonna get three halves. And you're gonna get x equals minus three. So those are the two factors. So you found your two factors, you think you're done with the problem, and then you remember, oh no. Oh no. One of them might not actually be a real answer to this problem. So you have to check them to make sure they are. And like I said before, the easy way to do that is just plug those into the denominator and make sure none of the denominators become zero. So let's start with three halves. So three halves minus three, that's not gonna be zero, so that's fine. Three halves plus three, not gonna be zero. Three halves minus three, not gonna be zero. And three halves plus three, not gonna be zero. So that seems like a good answer. We're just checking to make sure it doesn't become zero. Now we're gonna plug in minus three. 
minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. That's fine. Now minus 3 plus 3, that's going to become 0. And that gets multiplied by whatever this is, you know. And this whole denominator is going to become 0. And that's not going to be, that's not going to work out. It's also going to become 0 right here when you plug it in. So that cannot be a good answer because when it makes the denominator 0, you can't use it. So the only valid answer is x equals 3 halves. And that's going to be the only answer you'd select on a test.